All right. Hi everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Alexis and I am a fourth year PhD student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And today we're diving into a topic that is crucial for anyone thinking about applying to graduate school. So whether you're aiming for a master's or a PhD, it's very important that you're able to write a compelling statement of purpose. And this can really make the difference on whether or not you get accepted into your dream program. So before we jump in, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you receive notifications for when we release weekly videos about our lives as a PhD student couple living in Hawaii. We also do a lot of videos on how to apply to graduate school and what being a PhD student is like. Okay, so what exactly is the statement of purpose? Um, it has a few other names, um, statement of purpose, statement of objectives, or statement of intent. These are usually always the same thing, and it's roughly about two pages of a writing statement that you're gonna be submitting as part of your graduate school application, in addition to the rest of the online application or your CV. But the statement of purpose is a really important component. Uh, you can think of it as like your pitch to the admissions committee as to why you are a perfect candidate for that master's or PhD position. So you wanna tell your story, uh, you wanna showcase what your passions are and how your research interests align with their program. So you're going to be outlining both your academic and professional goals and your reasons for choosing that specific PhD program or that research topic and you also want to tie it back to your previous experiences and really show them and give them confidence in why you're um, the perfect candidate for that research position. So sometimes these statement of purpose um, statements have very clear instructions or like bullet points of what they want you to talk about, but other times it's very broad and unclear what exactly you need to be um, hitting and addressing. So in this video, I kind of wanted to just break it down generally what a statement of purpose can include and how to go about writing one. So step one is to know your audience um, before writing. So make sure that before applying to each school and before writing your statement of purpose, you've had time to do research on that school, their graduate program, the different degrees that they offer, as well as the different labs that they have or the different faculty that your research might align with. Um, if they have like any mission statements or any like really popular uh, facilities that are good to know about or mention in your statement, uh, make sure that you're hitting all of those points. Make sure that your statement is specific to each school. If you're applying to like 30 schools, don't use the same template. It's okay to like reuse parts of it um, and changing up like certain sentences, but you do want to make sure that when the committee is reading your statement of purpose, it really sounds like you took the time to research their school, their faculty, their different labs, and that what you're presenting as your research topics align well with the research that they do at that school. So tailoring your statement to the criteria missions or like values that are really important to their school can really help you stand out in the application process. So step two is the structure of your statement of purpose and what exactly it should include. I tried to break this down like paragraph by paragraph or section by section to make it a little bit easier for you guys um, as you're starting to write this. So first you'll want to have an introduction paragraph and here you want to really like grab the reader's attention. You want, to, you want it to be a little hook that keeps them reading, but also gives them an idea of who you are, where you're coming from, what's important to you, what your passions are, or what first really got you interested in this area of research. So here you can share a personal anecdote or a compelling reason as to why you want to go to graduate school. 
Um, I found this section to be like really, really difficult because I feel like everything that I was writing, I really just didn't like. So it took a lot of like time, effort, and like thought went into this a small hook just to like grab their attention that really captures who I was, where I was coming from, and where I saw myself going in the future. So honestly, I don't think what I wrote here is a like excellent example of what the introduction might look like, but I'll read it aloud for you. And I wrote, growing up in the suburbs of Los Angeles, I took every possible opportunity to observe urban wildlife around me and explore the natural world. I quickly developed a deep appreciation for nature and desire to protect biologically diverse environments like the ocean. As humans continue to interact with and change natural environments, it becomes increasingly important to understand the effects of this change on organisms and biodiversity as a whole. I am especially interested in studying marine ecosystems because the human population's dependence on them for food, oxygen production, climate regulation, and recreation. So as I said, I don't think this is like a really outstanding example of what a hook might look like, um, but here I was trying to like give them an idea of where it was coming from, like LA, um, which is like a big urban city, but I like went out um, to explore the natural world around me as much as I can. Um, and then I kind of introduced that I cared about the ocean and what kinds of research I saw myself doing. So this was like more focused on the anthropogenic effects, which is what a lot of my previous research like tied around or like a central theme and was also the research that I saw myself going into. So like now I'm working on a deep sea mining program, which aligns really well with anthropogenic impacts. But I was also looking at other like coral reef ecology and like coral reef bleaching projects. Um, so that's kind of why I settled on this introduction. And yeah, it's not great, but hopefully that gives you like an idea of what it could look like. And hopefully with enough time and thought, like you guys are also able to come up with a really strong one. So next, I think you want to introduce your academic and professional goals in the short term and also in the long term. So in the short term, it can look like which PhD or master's programs are you applying to, or specifically which program at the school are you applying to, and why do you need it in order to like get closer to your long-term goals of maybe becoming a professor or doing non-academic research. Yeah, so whatever that might be, you just wanna be sure that you're clearly stating your future goals um, that's part of the like objectives part, I feel like. So here I said I want to obtain a PhD in biological oceanography. That was the name of the program at University of Hawaii. Uh, so you want to make sure it matches the school. And I said because I want to better understand marine organisms, how they interact with one another and their physical environments. So I was describing like the ecology components and how they respond to anthropogenic stressors. In addition to taking challenging coursework, I am eager to conduct original research and develop as a scientist. That's why I wanted to do a PhD. And after earning my PhD, I aspire to pursue a career in academia as a postdoctoral research and eventually as a tenure track professor. Um, I aim to become a leader in marine science and conduct research that can be used to inform policy and manage marine resources. So at the time when I was applying, this is what I thought I wanted like my future goals to look like. I thought I would become a postdoc after, um, maybe become a tenure track professor. And I kind of expanded on it a little bit more like why I wanted to do the research that I wanted to do. I wanted to do research that can inform marine policy. And I think this can be written like even better than I have it written now, but that's just an example of what the near-term and long-term goals can look like. And you wanna make sure that you do like need a PhD or a master's in order to reach that next long-term goal. Or if you don't exactly need it, why do you want it? So be sure you're addressing all of that in this next paragraph. Okay, so the next section of your statement of purpose is gonna be like the meat of your statement. And in my example, it's paragraphs three, four, five, and six. So quite a bit 
um, was dedicated to this section where I'm telling them about my research interest um, as well as all of the relevant background that I have. So here in this section of your statement of purpose, it's really your time to shine. So you want it to be really focused on you, your research interest, your previous experience and relevant background, and all of your accomplishments. So everything um, that is important about you, everything cool that you've done, all of your great achievements and everything that makes you a perfect or ideal candidate for this master's or PhD should be in this section. So really don't shy away from mentioning everything that you've done and that you've been involved in, um, which makes you like a good candidate for this position. So this can include a lot of things, for example, but it can be what previous job experience do you have? Um, what's your academic background? Which degrees uh, did you pursue in undergrad or before applying to this graduate program? What kind of projects have you done? Maybe internships, clubs you were involved in, scholarships, honors and awards, um, leadership positions, any presentations that you've given, publications that you've written, or any other accomplishments or skills that you've developed that can be useful um, and show that you can succeed in graduate school. So here, I think it's really important that you're being as specific as possible. So don't just say, I did this research project, say, what the research project was, why you were doing it, what you actually did compared to the rest of your team, maybe like how many hours per week, how many semesters or how many years, you can give the dates or like the month and the year that you were involved in that project, how many presentations, how many publications, um, wherever you can quantify things, I think that's really good to do. So if you were involved in a club, like what exactly did you do? What was your leadership position? What impact did you have? And can you quantify that? Like if you volunteered, how many hours, how many days per week, how many months total, things like that. Just being as specific as possible. And when writing this section, if you're not sure what to include, I think it could be really helpful to work from an existing resume or CV that you have that shows everything that you've been involved in throughout your academic career and professional career. If you don't have a CV and need help creating one, I have another video on this channel that breaks down how to write an outstanding CV that you can use um, for when reaching out to potential faculty members, and also to include with the rest of your graduate school application. So go check that out after if you don't have a CV and would like to create one because I think it could be really helpful for when writing this section to make sure you're sharing everything that is important and not missing anything major. Okay, so another tip that I have for writing this section about your relevant background is to be really future focused. So of course you want to mention all of your previous experiences, um, but it's really important that you focus more on what you got out of that experience and how it has helped prepare you for grad school. So if you're mentioning different research experiences that you have in undergrad, you want to really focus on like the skills you got out of it, what you learned and how all of these skills, whether it's like time management, um, certain techniques or just like writing, presenting, what skills did you take out of it that can directly be applied in your graduate program. So here you want to show them that you have done similar things to a smaller scale because nothing's going to be um, like a PhD or like a master's project as an undergrad or probably not. But you want to show them that you've at least dipped your toe in this like world of research and academia. This is what you've learned. This is what you took out of it. And this is how they can like be confident that you're a good applicant and that you can be successful in graduate school. Because remember that they're going to be choosing students that instill confidence in them that like the student could be 
successful in graduate school because they're not going to put anyone in graduate school that doesn't seem ready because it's just like a really tough process in general. So they're going to try to choose the people that seem ready and seem like they could be a good fit for this program. So yeah, be future focused with everything you're saying. It's okay to talk about what you did, but just make sure you're focusing on the connection between what you did and why it prepares you for grad school. So I think this is a really long um, section of your statement of purpose. As you can see here, I dedicated four different paragraphs to it. And I kind of wanted to give you a little tip of how you can break it down into the different um, types of previous experience. So the way that I kind of broke it down, and I'll show you mine right now, is I started with my academic background and tried to focus more on telling them about which university I went to, what my degrees and minors were in, what my research interests were, and like kind of how I became interested in that. So yeah, you can see what I'm writing here, but I'll kind of summarize the main points. I say my academic background, extensive research experience, and contribution to science outreach. So here I'm kind of giving them a like introduction of what the following paragraphs will contain. Uh, this one's about academic background, so I tell them where I graduated from, when, what my bachelors were in, um, what my minors were in. I told them why I studied ecology and evolutionary bio and why I added the second major. I also mention how I took this marine ecology and conservation course during my sophomore year, which really had an impact on me and kind of encouraged me to be more interested in marine science um, and conservation issues. So I mention a few specific examples of that. And I also say that this experience like motivated me to, compl to complete a marine science minor and to take field courses in San Diego, Mexico, and the Galapagos Islands. Then um, in the following two paragraphs, I'm focusing more on my relevant research experience that I did as an undergrad. So during undergrad, I had the opportunity to work in two labs, a plant lab and a reptile lab. So here I'm devoting one entire paragraph to each lab experience. Um, I tell them the dates. So yeah, I say conducting research at the University of Arizona for four years. I'm being specific, taught me skills that I can apply to grad school. Uh, from these dates to these dates, I worked in this lab with the full lab name, the name of the PI, um, what I got out of this experience. So it allowed me to get started in research, read scientific literature, participate in weekly lab meetings, and to keep an organized lab notebook, all skills that can be applied to grad school. <laughs> I also learned different lab techniques such as DNA extractions, PCR amplification, and gel electrophoresis. This is also really important to list any um, like molecular techniques or certain techniques that you know, because it just so happens that the lab that I'm currently working in uses all of these lab techniques. So I'm sure this really helped um, me as I was applying to the lab that I'm currently in. And I say after helping out grad students, I had the opportunity to conduct my own independent honors project. I say the name of my project. I said this was an invaluable experiment, experience that taught me how to develop my own research protocol, design an experimental setup, and work long hours in the lab collecting fitness measurements from 300 plants. So I'm trying to quantify um, what I was doing there. I guess the long hours part isn't really specific, but it gives them an idea, hopefully. And then I go into my second research experience. Um, I say why I shifted from one to the other, that I wanted to explore other research methods and work with different study organisms. I say the dates, name of the lab, name of the PI. It allowed me to conduct field work, analyze and interpret results, strengthen my writing and presentation skills, participate in science outreach. That's kind of like a teaser for the next paragraph. I spent a year studying this, working in a team, the name of the project. I received the UA NASA Space Grant, so that's just a little name drop of a scholarship slash award. 
or grant that I got, which gave me the opportunity to work on this other project. Using like this data set, I completed my honors thesis. So if you've done any type of honors thesis or undergrad thesis, be sure to mention it here with the full title. I said I'm also working on a publishable manuscript. That didn't get done, but if you are in the works of like doing one, definitely mention it. It can't hurt. In addition to improving my writing skills, this experience has encouraged me to step up my comfort zone presenting at scientific meetings. Um, I've given a total of six poster presentations, three oral presentations, and an invited seminar in Leiden in the Netherlands. Um, Post-graduation working as a full-time researcher has given me a better understanding. That I was just explaining um, my gap year because during my gap year I was continuing this undergrad research and kind of like finishing it up. So I wanted to address that here. One thing that really helped me stand out in the statement of purpose were all of the scientific meetings and presentations that I had given. So if you've done anything of that type, make sure to include it here because it's something that you're going to be doing a lot of in graduate school. And if you continue to stay a researcher in academia, presentations, both oral and poster, are all really important. So definitely mention that if you have the experience. And lastly, I end with my previous experience in science outreach because during my undergrad, this was like a common theme in my CV. Like I did a lot of scientific outreach and education through the clubs, through my research labs. So I try to sum that up here. And I would call this like my broader impacts. It's good to think of your relevant background in terms of intellectual merit. So that's all the academic side and the broader impacts, which can be extracurriculars and other things that you care about that aren't exactly your research. This is actually the NSF criteria. So those terms like intellectual merit and broader impacts are really helpful to think about. So here in this paragraph, I'm summing up like my broader impacts initiatives, all of my extracurricular stuff. So I say, yeah, sharing research with the public, managing a lab website, Facebook page, Instagram account. I'm solely responsible for writing weekly social media posts and up updating the news and events section of our website. Yeah, we conducted projects um, in the greater Tucson community where we worked with like an elementary school on a lizard, like a mini li lizard project for 34th graders. I said the role that I had, so I was a contact person, scheduled field days, gave a brief introduction to the students about the research, ensuring that the project ran smoothly. Um, and kind of what I got out about it, like I was really excited to see them get excited about science and reptiles. And it taught me how to present science in a way that's easily understandable and reinforced my desire to become a professor. I think because I really liked teaching students, young students, um, which made me think that I just like teaching and I could be a good professor. Yeah, so that was a lot, but that was basically uh, what I wrote for my relevant background and academic non-academic, extracurricular experience. So the next and final paragraph of your statement of purpose should be where you align your interest with a particular program and school that you're applying to. So here you want to show to the admissions committee that you've really done your research on their school, their program, and that you're really excited to be a part of their community. You can talk a little bit about why you want to go there. So why that school? Maybe it's in a place you're really interested in. Why that program? So maybe they do types of research that are really interesting to you. Maybe there are certain faculty members that you want to work with. You want to name drop a few so that they know that you've like done your research and make sure that you're name dropping like the correct ones that actually align with your research interest. And yeah, why are you a great fit for that school? How are you gonna contribute to the community there? So make this part as specific as possible. If you're gonna change anything throughout your statement of purpose, this section is really important to tailor to each school. So don't make it sound like you sent the same statement of purpose to all 
30 schools that you're applying to. I'll give you a quick example of what I wrote. Yeah, it would be an honor to receive my PhD from here in this department. If admitted, studying at UH Manoa would allow me access to, yeah, large coral reef habitats, this national monument, HIMB, which are all a lie because I'm actually not doing any of those right now. But you know, as an undergrad applying, you don't really know what you're going to have access to and not. Um, so just, yeah, mentioning certain facilities that might be important to that department could be good. I said specifically I would be interested in studying deep sea biology and the impacts of deep sea mining on biodiversity under the supervision of these three faculty members and actually one of which I am currently working with now. So yeah, I think this area could be pretty important. I would also be excited to study microbes uh, with these other people. So I kind of had like a broad range. There wasn't something that I exactly wanted to do. Yeah, that's what my advisor said too, that I like had a really broad interest. But I think that's fine, as long as you're mentioning why that faculty member and how that aligns with the research that you want to do. And then, yeah, I tried to tie it back to how a PhD in this um, would give me the skills that I need to become a leader in marine science. That was kind of like my little ending and like long-term goal. So yeah, that's just an example of how you can show that your interests really align with that school and why you're a good fit for that program. So the last and final tip that I have for you guys is to really edit and proofread your statement of purpose as much as possible because typos and grammatical mistakes are really not gonna look in your favor. They're not gonna make a good impression that you want to be making with the statement of purpose. I think you should be starting to draft the statement of purpose pretty early um, to give yourself enough time to edit, give it to people to look at, get feedback, make more edits, and to make it really as strong as possible, fully capturing why you're the ideal candidate for that school. Yeah, so get feedback from as many people as you can. I think this is gonna really help it. I had a lot of my friends read it, my sister, um, maybe even my parents too, at least for grammatical mistakes. I would start working on this around like August and September, towards the end of summer, if you're planning to apply with an October to January due date. So well in advance, um, if you can take some time to write this and to get it out of the way, I think that would be pretty wise. So there you guys have it. Those are my top tips for writing an outstanding statement of purpose for the graduate school application. So remember, it's all about telling your authentic story, showcasing your passion for this field, and also aligning yourself within that school that you're applying to. Thank you so much for watching and best of luck with your graduate school applications. If you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with a friend that might find it useful. And if you're looking for more tips on the graduate school application process, check out another video that I did on how to apply to graduate school. Uh, we did one for people based within the U.S. and also for international students, if that applies to you. As always, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.